So what have I put in the bag for my wildlife photography this summer? Welcome to an edition of Camilla and I. This is my YouTube channel and I'm Mark Cooper. And the subject for discussion today is what's in my wildlife kit bag for summer. And the reason we're doing this is because it's been a horrendous week and uh, it's been quite difficult to get outside. Typical British weather. And indeed, I actually had to work on a commission. So uh, yeah, very boring commission, quite a traditional subject round here, link to uh, commission shot, thanks for that. And um, yeah, so I've been a bit distracted, so I haven't been able to get out in the field. So hence, we're in the studio. Anyway, regular viewers of Camilla and I will be pleased to note that I was able to get out and get a photo of the week. So it was indeed taken this week, and indeed I actually had a choice of two, but we'll save that feature for later on. I meant to do one of these last year and uh, nearly got round to it. What's in my summer wildlife kit bag? And it does change from the main sort of winter kit because on these hot days, you uh, do get a bit tired of lugging around a 600 millimeter lens, even if you have got a trolley. Um, so uh, I tend to move on to a lighter system, a lighter setup. So it's a, yeah, it's a very good idea in summer as the uh, sun rises so quickly. You've got such a short opportunity first thing in the morning that uh, if you use a more longevity approach and um, go for a more all day kit and uh, stick to the shade a bit, well, that's what we do on Camilla and I. Anyway, firstly, I pair the Sony A1 with the 100 to 400 millimeter f4.5 to 5.6 sony lens this is then dual purpose this goes on my cotton carrying harness and um, i use this in order to get instant grab shots as i walk around and this is permanently attached to my chest so hopefully i don't miss anything i'm a little bit short 400 millimeters i would like the 600 millimeter but this lens also doubles as it has a sort of macro capability. It will focus down to 1.24 meters at 400 millimeters. And this takes you right in on the subject, link to photo right in the subject. Often in the summer, you can't get near to the little flighty blighters. So it's very good to use a 400 millimeter with a short focus distance. So this combination is an ideal pairing. I can walk around with this virtually all session long. I, I want to wear it around my neck all day. Well, on the cotton carrying harness all day long, I'm not so sure. But I would also take a monopod with me as well. So you can uh, rest it on a monopod. And this gets the, um, the larger subjects as well as the macro capability. So on Camilla and I, of course, we're very lucky and uh, we've still got the A92. Uh, so we're uh, also going to take this round with us as well. I actually take two bodies in the summer. Usually in the winter, 
if you've watched earlier videos, I only take one body. But in the summer, I particularly don't want to change lenses. Although these are set now, I think, to, uh, oh yeah, they're set for anti-dust function. I do not really want to be changing this lens out in the field. I mean, it's perfectly possible, but you don't really want to be getting any elements of dust, pollen, etc., into your filter. So we're very lucky. We have two dedicated bodies. And the reason we use this one with the dedicated body is because this is the lens we're going to get in on close. So we're hoping to get a full frame image with this, with a subject that's static. So 25 megapixels with this should be plenty. And indeed in the past has been plenty linked to uh, some shots with this combination in the past. And this should get us in nice and close with the world's 10th sharpest lens and uh, indeed a superb camera attached. So that's the two bodies I'm taking with me. What about the ancillary equipment which supports these items? Um, I suppose the first thing I would support is the cotton carrying, cotton carrier harness system. I mean, it is a very good, um, very good system and I'd recommend this for all day use in the field. A very clever system having the camera instantly attached to your chest and then be able to use it in a split second absolutely awesome capability and um, yeah very convenient to have your main camera to hand then of course the next item we require for the macro capability is a steady support system and obviously i use a tripod either well, you can use either a tripod or a monopod or indeed a monopod with three feet, um, such as this one. So we vary between Camilla and I what we're going to use. We could use a monopod like so, or we could use a tripod. And if we use the tripod over here, we also have this ingenious device, which is a Wimberley clamp. And these are well worth acquiring. I think Wex Photo Video still do them. And this is one with an extended arm. So I've got the longer extension. They do come a bit shorter than this, but this one's got extra reach because it's got an extra section on it. But literally, this is a, a very good lifesaver when you've got any wind at all. You can, if you're really careful, you can clamp your subject's stalk off in this little device here and clamp this end either to the tripod or probably more logically, stake it into the ground with a pen knife and support it separately. And then you can move around your subject independently of this Wimbley clamp. Absolutely superb. So yeah, recommend on the list one of these Wimberley clamps. The next essential bit of kit for any macro photography is a little reflector. These things are very useful just to reflect back in a bit of natural light on your subject. Often grasses and um, small insects are very low down in vegetation and require a bit of supplementary light. So uh, good idea to get one of these. Um, this was part of a free gift, I think, came with something lazuli. light. But yeah, a little small reflector, very clever. And indeed, you want another reflector, a bigger reflector, to shield your subject if you've got the option or your subject so you can keep the direct sunlight from directly shining on your subject. And this again is a very good system. So use one of these bigger, bigger screens for that sort of thing. Similar sort of thing you'd use in a studio on a model. So um, yeah, very useful for macro modeling. 
Yeah, and a couple of other things I would keep in the bag are, of course, your lens, pens, cleaning equipment for your um, lenses, etc. In the summer, it's a much more dusty environment, and it's a good idea to have the old brush to clean away any dirt. And also in the summer, I can use a polarizing filter. So again, this is an option to use a polarizing filter. So not a bad idea to have a polarizer in there. And the other thing I keep on me as well is a pen knife and a small pair of scissors. These are um, quite crucial really to the operation because your small subjects do require manicuring to some extent. Obviously don't go mad and cut down the whole rare orchid to get to your subject, but obviously it's perfectly all right to tidy an area up with a bit of grass. Um, fair play as long as it's not a rare grass. Yeah, but there we go. So um, yeah, that's what's in the bag. So uh, yeah, what a wonderful, wonderful summer. Just now need a small problem here in the UK. We need the weather to be able to go out and photograph. So uh, that's why we're in today. It's uh, intermittent raining cats and dogs, as uh, we say in England. So uh, yeah, but we will be out there. And when we do, we'll be with this equipment. So that's what's in the bag. Yeah, now on to uh, the more serious issue, my photo of the week. And I had a bit of a dilemma this week because it could either be a yellow wagtail in a field of rapeseed, or it could be a buzzard being chased by a lapwing. So, whew, it's a tough choice. What do you think? I'm gonna go for the buzzard being chased by the lapwing in the Woodford Valley. Absolutely amazing. I was out photographing the white throat, as you do, and uh, needless to say, this commotion happened over to my uh, far side. So I uh, obviously zoomed in on that action, instantly switched to uh, 1 1500th of a second and got a burst away. And uh, this is the best of the burst, I believe. So uh, a lapwing defending its territory or indeed its eggs, didn't uh, really see. But uh, anyway, yeah, good bit of interaction between a buzzard and a lapwing. My shot of the week. Anyway, before I go today, I was just going to inquire what sort of photography you would like me to cover. Obviously going into the summer season, um, you know, if you've got any particular areas or topics you think I should cover, please let me know in the comments below. That would be great. And indeed, I've got one project that I might do, but it's a little bit sensitive and I don't know how you feel about it, guys. So if you could let me know whether you think it's okay for me to photograph in the local cemetery. Um, there's some wonderful wildlife subjects in there. It's a Salisbury District Council cemetery, um, but it is a cemetery. So apart from being a bit spooky, is it a bit not sensitive enough? But uh, there's some marvellous, marvellous wildlife. And it's sort of 500 yards that way. So uh, you know Camilla and I, we like to do local wildlife photography. So let me know if you want to see pictures from my local cemetery, because I've already sneaked in a couple. But um, yeah, anyway, see if you want me to do a feature on cemetery wildlife photography. A bit specialised I know, but you know Camilla and I, we go to any lengths to bring you the wildlife you want to see. Anyway, thanks for watching. Great, just a short one on Camilla and I. Well, I hope it was short. I haven't edited it yet. Could go on for hours. But love you. Have a good one. Just get out there when you can, when the weather lets you. And uh, look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye for now from Camilla and I.